Okay. One, two, three, four. All right, so I am the one man protester, the one man army. I am protesting and protesting all by myself. And my best, de my best uh, means is through social media. I'm, I'm trying to make the most of social media with my protesting. Um, and I don't know if the city sees that or what, what their perception is. I think this, the city just approaches me as the individual and possibly a sovereign citizen individual whom they know from experience and, and the uh, knowledge that you can pick sovereign citizens off one by one. I did see a video yesterday that was very interesting on how uh, a sovereign citizen, he, he used those uh, techniques. He called uh, a professional network, I think is what he called it, and they guided him through uh, sovereign citizen steps. I mean, he ended up with like five criminal charges. So you know he was doing a good good job there when the cops really went heavy on him about marijuana and, and uh, not having plates or a driver's license. You know you're doing a good job when they when they're really extra heavy on you and uh as as uh like somebody who's watching this uh seeing that it really didn't seem fair uh how the cops treated this guy <clears throat> i think they i think he did a good job i try to think of myself as an even-handed even uh, as a uh not a temperamental person as as a as a person who who sees things with a with a clear view i don't do any narcotics or or uh, uh i don't do any i don't take any uh, i avoid chemicals um but i mean sometimes some people just can't avoid chemicals it's like it's in the water apparently i'm told that there's there's fluoride added to this water and my teeth do feel different after spending months here yeah, my teeth feel a little different, um, so it's it's very possible. And I've traveled through cities that don't put fluoride in that do, but I mean I'm exposed to different uh, chemicals that are not uh, in my control. I, I can control what I what I eat though, and and I, I don't do the sugar extracts or, or just anything to take take my my mind out of reality. So I like to think that I'm an even-handed person. I'm, I'm constantly trying to ground myself with with nature, which which is a, a, a good step to to uh, balancing your your spirit. So I, I try to take that approach uh, in in my evaluation of things. Does this feel natural? Does it feel reasonable and fair and just? I try to take in our natural beings because I mean we have a right to pursue happiness and and uh, <clears throat> and that uh, usually is mostly going to involve being in touch with nature so pursuing that uh, can bring you to greater enlightenment getting in touch with nature and and it helps uh, give uh, a more natural perspective on issues I mean <laughs> You see how far uh, like big cities can go with with uh, what they consider fair, and it's it's crazy to the, the to the small town country folk uh, what extremes that the the big cities will go to, uh, and and sometimes sometimes that'll bleed into smaller towns, maybe smaller towns that surround the big city or something. So you wanna you wanna um, get in touch with what what feels what feels fair uh, but i mean there's there's probably also other factors too to consider the economy and and all but i mean the economy is based on the environment we're limited by the resources available so uh this this guy he 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 did the sovereign citizen thing and he got picked off as an individual and i'm being picked off as an individual i'm not in a nice comfortable group of people uh, to, to back each other up for for uh, my my situation except on online so 
why wouldn't the cops go after that? Why wouldn't they go after my social media? And they have um, many, many times in the past from past arrests. So <clears throat> it's been, it's been, uh, it's a constant thing. It's an ongoing thing. It's been done. My channel has gotten shut down and I had to fight to get it back up uh, a few years ago. And it's, it's continuing. I'm, I'm still getting threatened today about getting my channel shut down by, by somebody. They say that they're on to me and, and this is the last straw. This is the last straw every time. I'm at my last straw. So it's still up. I can still, I can still talk about my issues and I appreciate YouTube for doing this. I mean, I consider them a pretty fair, uh, um, uh, like, justice I, I i i consider that they have a pretty fair justice system on youtube it's the new justice system that really dictates how a lot of us live our lives we got a whole society on youtube living in cities in the jurisdiction of cities but i'm also in the jurisdiction of youtube all right i mean we we I live in I live in uh, different jurisdictions. The jurisdiction of social media, Twitter and Instagram and and all of those. There's there's uh, overlapping jurisdictions, and I, I I'm forming my my thoughts and opinions uh, on the jurisdiction of YouTube, on the jurisdiction of the First Amendment auditing of. Uh, activism, First Amendment auditing, activism, and and I'm, I'm coming into line with that as a lot of us are, which what seems fair and righteous in in living uh, within within our boundaries of our constitutional rights. We're 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 discussing this. We don't have to be experts like Judge Jowsley insists that we must be to make the to make the the important decisions. We must have those those special titles to make those important decisions. And that's just that's just, that's the small town mentality only in this jurisdiction mentality. He's he's like what's that guy Ed Bean yeah, in in the that small town in Texas. Bean. I know his last name is Bean. Judge Bean. <laughs> this, this is Judge Bean territory. This is Judge Owsley territory. Jurisdiction. He's got, he's got full control uh, of this jurisdiction. No outside influence. You don't like our the way we do things. You can leave, but take your charge with you, and and let the FBI carry that. Uh, share that with all the other small towns who got the bean the bean the judge bean mentality i control this the law is what i say it is and that's what's turning out to be here all right he's not following a lot of the supreme court hired decisions he's he's just kind of following what what seems logical to him but what seems logical to him is what seems fair cutting it's, it's what seems going halfway with the prosecutor on <laughs> and the prosecutor is very crazy all right very extreme with his with his uh, approach and the judge is only trying to ro go halfway with crazy and it's 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 not working in in uh the favor of of how the rest of the nation is operating uh with with id i just do regular i just visit a uh, another library out of the hundreds I've, I've visited and and act the same way I have want to look around look for a place to sit down get comfortable uh, not really interact it's a library it's shh at the library and this time I get arrested and charged and I'm I'm, I'm still two months in uh, actually facing a criminal trial over going to the library over my over my ID at the library this is a first. This is Judge Bean territory. So <clears throat> that's the jurisdiction, and, and I'm a protester by myself. The only way I, I have other people involved is electronically through the, uh, the light waves and electronic signals. That's it. And I'm not asking anybody to come here because I warn everybody, don't come here, all right? Not... Not your best decision to come to Steel Magnolias Town. This is this is a, a town with that history from the 80s. All right, 
girl died in 85 after giving birth from her diabetic complications. Um, I think it was probably type 1. I didn't quite catch what which one it was, type A or type B. I think it was type A, type A born with it. Because that's kind of early on in the sugar craze. The sugar, Coca-Cola didn't switch over from from cane sugar to corn syrup until 1979. That's when Warren Buffett was all in. And now he's now he's the most no one of the most famous investors of all time because of that change that because he found out that Coca-Cola made that change to cut costs. They didn't do anything to uh increase their 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 productivity. They just found a way to cut costs. Go turn to the the government subsidized corn syrup and and take advantage of those cheap prices because the government made corn syrup more competitive way more competitive than it should have been and and that got some people rich and uh this girl's diet i forget her name di her diabetes i don't know if it was a result of that but it could have been it could have been my mom was my mom was was overweight she was obese in, in the 70s and, and sugar was very readily available, but it didn't it didn't go over that hump of obesity epidemic until Coca-Cola was able to take advantage of the subsidy uh, of corn. So she died, and she's she's had a move. She had somebody who was a good writer, her brother, I think, who wrote about uh, her and and made a, a play and a movie, Steel Magnolias and very similar circumstances, all based here, too. Similar circumstances, fictional, but they brought it, they brought the scenes to, to the actual spot, place that it ha occurred. And I'm not too enthused about the movie. It's about women coming together and, and getting, and, and supporting each other and, and keeping each other strong through the tough times. So it's it's not really anything. They even say the supporting all the supporting actors were men. They were just the supporting actors. Um, but it, it it happened here, and and in that time, uh, when this this uh, one guy built up the the city apparently, improved the conditions of the city, made it look historical because it's the oldest city in the the, the Louisiana Purchase. Uh, then the movie was. The, the the movie crew was brought here now I wonder if how, how that how that happened I mean there's there's talks the brother may have reached out to the movie company saying hey we got a good script here it's good enough for a play you could probably make a movie out of it bring it here because we also built up Natchitoches but uh, since then it's it's uh it's not bad it's 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 decent I guess in some parts but I mean, hearing gunfire almost every night is is troubling. That's why I, that's a big reason why I say don't come here because people are shooting each other still. Just a couple nights ago, and, um. So, but I'm a big concern. All right, I'm sitting here protesting my civil rights, and I'm I'm such a big concern with uh, the police, uh, and and how they do things around here. And and uh, they got they got bigger concerns than me about ID. How about IDing the guns and the bullets? Like uh, they have to ID me, but it seems to me like they're not IDing the guns, and these guns are getting back into the the other people's hands so they could be shot again. I think the, I think there's some some kind of racket going on here with with uh, guns. To mention an, a, uh, an uh, assault rifle, an AR-15 twice uh, for, for two car chases, only like a month apart, sounds to me like it was either planted by the cops or they gave it to the guys in some in some way. Even some people on Facebook, I, I made the comment on Facebook in that news article, even some people on, on uh, one lady on Facebook says that she believes that the gun was planted. I don't know what relation she has to these, these young guys um, but I mean, there is aggression here. Uh, I don't know if their preferred method, uh, for resolving their aggressions here are guns, but it's certainly acting out, acting out, being loud, showing your anger, don't ball, not bawling it inside. And that's fine. But, uh, to, to, to feel that justice 
is best served uh, with with a gun. First of all, I wonder where they're where the locals are getting them. They're so poor. Where are they get? How are they affording guns? All right, the cops can afford the guns, but the the poor locals. Uh, I mean, you think that their priorities. I mean, they're they're living amongst each other. Even even if they're trying to rob each other, they weren't. They're not robbing each other for much. All right. So there's not a huge advantage there. There's not a a, a large uh, uh, advantage. Uh, um, a re there's not a large reward uh, for the risk robbing each other here. So there's there's something else going on here, and I think it's real seedy. But I'm I'm here to to defend myself. Uh, to, to fight for uh, my civil rights, which is I guess isn't quite selfish um, but uh, it, it feels like that I, I feel alone at times and I think they they're they're trying to take advantage of that by by wearing me down uh, Making making some real nasty accusations against me the prosecutor. He's the one paid to do it He's the focal point for the accusations all right, judge a little bit, a little bit. He's got to meet halfway with the prosecutor, so it looks bad. Prosecutor says he wants to charge me with witness intimidation, and, and the judge just says, well, it's out of my jurisdiction. <laughs> um, he's not agreeing or disagreeing. He's just like, that's not in my jurisdiction. <laughs> do what you got to do. And the, the pro once again, I mean, how else does a city work, though? I mean, who else can make accusations? They don't want retribution on the streets they want to avoid that they want to focus things they want to focus things in the courtroom but uh when the courtroom doesn't feel very fair uh, then yeah it's not easy to deal with that but i'm i'm uh i've been protesting for since for a long time now uh, uh minor it's it's been improving my protesting skills because these are skills you develop over time learning from others, getting suggestions, some suggestions I take, some I don't, and and uh, harnessing um, my defense. Every time this type of thing happens with my ID, I have a certain protocol to follow, instant discovery uh, re request. But I, see, the thing is, when I, when I was getting harassed by cops early on in 2013 in my home, hometown of Rice Lake, Wisconsin, I didn't know about... I didn't know about uh, really the ID. There was no real ID movement. There was no First Amendment. I didn't know about PNAC. It, it was just kind of me. I wasn't even recording the cops. I was kind of scared. In twenty back in twenty thirteen, I was, I was just, I was just kind of recording my. I was documenting my reaction after talking with the cops, which doesn't get traction. I was talking about, and the cops were getting word of that, and. And it, it sounded like they were paying attention to what I had to say about them. So even talking about the cops, what is enough to get their attention? Um, recording them gets gets more of their attention, and they get to see a reflection of how they're treating you. I mean, I was getting my ID asked for in 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 Rice Lake multiple times by cops, and they knew me. But they just, you know, that's their little power trip to ask for my ID. And I was like, here you go, man, here you go. I'm happy to give my ID. But now it's like, I don't care so much to, to mess around with that, especially after having a gun pulled on me. That was, that was, that was when I was given ID. Up until that point, I was still kind of protesting about the ID thing. Um, <clears throat> but, uh. I, well, I started protesting a little bit before that, but there was a point. What was that point that I cracked? It was people suggesting that, why don't you give... That one dude that said, why don't you give him a urine test? It's like, I'm giving in so much. And I realized when he said that, and also I realized when I give ID, the cops are like, okay, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Are you on drugs? When do you, when do you plan on leaving? I'm like, that's it. I'm not... I don't want to get those questions. I'm tired of those questions. All right, let's just argue about the ID. All right, let's just stop it right there at the ID part. And then, and, it, and the conversation doesn't uh, go into why are you here? What are you, when are you going to leave? Are you on drugs? Um, what's your social security number? Uh, just just pushing the itch. What's your date of birth? I'm like, I don't have to tell you any of that. 
and I'm not going to. Let's argue about that. Let's argue about my rights instead. Let's argue about civil rights instead of about me, all right? Especially when I'm just sitting, minding my own business, conduct, and living within my constitutional protectional rights, acting like anyone else, everyone else, any, any law-abiding citizen and getting harassed it, it, it's, it's, it turns, for me, it doesn't, it's not something about me trying to explain myself. And these cops are, in Natchitoches, are way too used to people just trying to explain themselves away. And then the cops look at you like, you know, are you telling the truth? You know, like they don't believe you. And then, and then uh, you know, that's just to get you to confess or whatever. Nope. That's not my conversation so much. Sometimes, you know, I'll throw in a little bit about how I'm a tourist. I'm not so much a tourist here now, but I'll talk, I'll talk about our constitutional rights that we all share together, us and the cops. But, uh, you know, when they have that badge on, they don't see it that way. They don't see us as having equal rights. They see themselves as having more rights. And so it takes somebody that has to push back and, and humble them in in that in that category so i'm i'm a one-man protest army and people like me get picked off one by one i'm getting some good support but uh yeah i'm i'm prob i'm probably more nervous being the one man the one man um activist being the one man i'm more nervous it's i'm taking more more uh stress all right, I'm, I'm absorbing more stress uh, doing it kind of by myself and only posting to the social media what what my issues are uh, as, as I'm, I'm moving forward on this. Whereas a group can actually support each other uh, on the spots. That's That may be a little bit uh, better for somebody's well-being having a group that they'll that they'll uh, do that with and you know not not a huge group maybe two or three people whatever but the, i mean that that's the problem though i i don't uh i don't really hang out with groups i never have um so i i don't really intend to try to join groups but i'm just i'm just saying uh uh it's something for a, another person to think about are you able to handle are you are you able to get along with uh, particular people enough to ma maintain a group and also fight too? You're like, as as uh, activists, you're a fighting group, so you may you may uh, step on each other's toes as activists. That's why um, I think I think um, like the uh, sovereign people might be more loners, so it's easy to pick them off. So it's it's uh, it's something that uh, these these corporations can do they're together in this the good old boy network can pick the individuals off every time every every time it's it's just it's just systematic so as a sovereign you gotta you gotta find a, a network you can't do it yourself but if you're gonna be a loner and have that mentality you gotta figure out a way to get around that so you can reach out to people and and uh and form a oh my god okay i'm gonna i'm gonna stop here all right I'll st boom boom and this fell all right suction ran out all right